Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because I have a dear friend of mine who is on the show today, and her name is Carrie Harlan, and she is globally recognized leader in integrative medicine and the science of health known as Ayurveda. She is passionate about raising awareness of the need in for, for a change in contemporary medicine that people focus on patient empowerment and a health-based rather than disease-based medical system. Carrie practices at the University of Pittsburgh Center for Integrative Medicine and remains a pioneer in integrative medicine. She has developed a personalized system to manage chronic disorders by incorporating fundamental diet, behavior, and stress changes while focusing on genetics. This is the Indo visualized program so it's and it's been so successful that so many of her clients have achieved maximum healing and vitality after years of chronic problems. Carrie is a published author and a TED Talk presenter and an author of the book 25 Day Ayurveda Cleanse and I have read that book and I absolutely love it and she's here today to share all this good information and to teach us things that can help us with our own lives. So Carrie, tell everybody what you do and tell them about yourself so you know people can understand exactly who you are and what you do. Yes, thank you, Stacey. I am thrilled to be here, so this is great. So um, thank you for the great introduction. Um, yeah, here in the US, there are two levels of Ayurveda. There's the lifestyle counselor who deals mainly with nutrition. And then there's the Ayurveda practitioner and they have clinical training. So I'm at that level, practitioner train, uh, you know, um, practitioner level, do have right. a graduate degree in Ayurveda as well as degrees in neuroscience and in education as well. And as you said, I'm at the um, University of Pittsburgh Center for Integrative Medicine. And here in my clinical practice, we really focus on the science behind this system of medicine. That way we can really get the benefit of Western technology, Western diagnostics, Western science, things like genetics, for example, along with that more Eastern approach of Ayurveda that says a personalized and preventative approach to medicine is definitely the way to go. So that is what I do in the world. I do it at the University of Pittsburgh Center for Integrative Medicine. I have my own company, The Holistic Highway. Uh, I am a TED talker. Um, I run a phenomenal retreat called the Ayurveda Sanctuary once a year. Um, so I'm out there in the world doing a lot of things, including talking with you today, which is <laughs> a fun thing to do. <laughs> You know, so many people have been, you know, it's been really a very trending topic. People understand they're getting the idea that they don't have to resort to medication all the time to try to heal themselves. And people are realizing that when they go on one medication, sometimes they get a side effect. Then they go back to the doctor and say, you know, now this bothers me. Then they get another medication. And before you know it, they have a pharmacy in their bathroom of medications interacting with one another and they're not getting better and they're not progressing. Integrative medicine has been, you know, it's starting to get very popular. People are understanding that there is another way to heal the body besides always using medications, that they can actually change their health, improve their, their, their overall mental, physical, and spiritual well-being through integrative medicine and Ayurveda. Now, for people who are not familiarized with Ayurveda, can you explain it more broadly so people understand this alternative medicine and understand how it's been, how it was formed, when it started, and how it actually works? Yeah, so Ayurveda in Sanskrit actually means the science of life or the science of longevity. So it really is a blueprint for how to live the rest of your life with health and vitality. And most people that come to me, the vitality is where the problem is. Stress over the years has just sort of robbed them. They come to me fatigued, depressed, digestive issues. So definitely that sense of vitality. But um, Ayurveda is a constitutional system of medicine, and it, it is a whole system of medicine, just like Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, that says each one of us is unique. So what's right for me is not necessarily right for you. Exactly. So, so we're, we're sort of um, channeled into metabolic types. If you like, much like we have our individual genetic blueprint, we have our individual dosha blueprint. That's, that's all it means. It's just your metabolic type. And depending upon your type, where you live, how you exercise, what you eat, all this becomes very relevant. So again, 
let's say I have digestive problems or I have high inflammation, what's right for me, my metabolic type with high inflammation may be very different for you with high inflammation. So the way I work, Stacey, imagine um, an iceberg. And at the tip of that iceberg are things like cancer, diabetes, hyperthyroidism, Hashimoto's, obesity, all the modern diseases of today. This is where the medical model meets us and gives us pharmaceuticals to decrease those symptoms. Not a bad way to go. Uncontrolled blood pressure is dangerous. Uncontrolled depression could be dangerous. But if you look below the level of the waterline, where the vast majority of that iceberg is, that is the underlying root cause of all those symptoms exactly. of the iceberg. That's the arena that Ayurveda works on. What is the underlying root cause? What is going at, what has gone out of balance? That fixing it for you means fi it's, it's different to fixing it for somebody else. But let's get to the root cause because then all the symptoms disappear. We don't exactly. just have to blindly medicate symptoms or give a pill for every ill, which is currently, you're right, which is what we do right now. We just medicate symptoms. Yeah. And, you know, for people who don't understand the dosha and there, you know, there's several different types of dosha. Can you explain that to people? Because when they hear that term, they're like, what's a dosha? You know, like people who are unfamiliarized in, in this area. So a dosha just means your type. Um, much like, you know, we could say, I don't know. Well, regardless, I can't think of an example. To <laughs> well, go ahead, explain <laughs> like the three types, you know, of dosha. So there are there are three main doshas that are made up of the elements. The elements come together to make up three main doshas. The first dosha is vata. So people who are predominantly vata tend to show up fairly thin. They tend to show up with not much body weight. Um, often um, very creative people, wonderfully creative, are able to think outside the box, love to travel, are very empathic people, often considered highly sensitive. So wonderful individuals, but when they go out of balance, we tend to see anxiety, digestive issues like gas and bloating, constipation, cold hands and feet. This is the type that's always cold. Um, and, and just sort of, and a sense of spinning, a sense of not being able to focus. Right. So when that type of person comes to me, often they, they're attracted to eating the wrong foods. So take, for example, one of my first clients I ever had, Lee, came to me. She was highly vata. So she had very sort of dry skin, dry hair, um, very prominent veins, prominent bones, a little tiny thing. And she would, she was twittering all over the place. And she goes, oh, Carrie, I don't know why I can't be healthy. I eat salads every single day. <laughs> so, and it was winter time. So all we did was change out her raw foods, which are aggravating her or more, making her more anxious, and just change that with grounding cooked foods. And within a month, she had no constipation. She wasn't constantly feeling cold. Her anxiety was down and she was sleeping through the night. So vatas often have problems sleeping. They wake up between three and four o'clock in the morning. Our next dosha, Pitta, and these are just very quick overviews. Yes. Um, is our more driven types. These are the type that have a plan and they know how to execute it. They like to figure out what's right, what's wrong with every decision they make. So they'll work out the pros and cons. They'll set up spreadsheets for everything. They like to have everything pre-planned. Often very concerned with time. This is the type that if they had an interview would go the day beforehand just to make sure that they knew where it was. They could park in enough time. So they like everything to run smoothly. These are our natural leaders and they're our natural problem solvers. But when pitters go out of balance, they burn out. They take on too much. They're perfectionists. They're often um, also wonderfully creative in, in getting out of problems. They're troubleshooters, but they burn out. And then we see things like acid reflux. We see migraines. We um, see problems getting to sleep and lack of focus. So a pitcher will come to me in midlife and say, you know, I, I just can't think straight. And I used to be so sharp, fix it. Yeah. You know, they want to get back to the way, where they used to be. But we love these people because they are our natural leaders. And then our third dosha kapha are our lovable kashas. And these are our peacemakers. These are the people that tend to show up as slightly more solid build. 
Um, they tend to be more voluptuous. They tend to put on weight really easy. They tend to be a little slower in thought, not that they're a little slow by any means, but they're just slower in attitude and in movements. Um, a good example is Oprah Winfrey. She would be a kaffir. A good example of Pitta would be Tom Cruise. Very sort of, um, he's got that steady gaze that's attractive because mm -hmm. he's a guy. Mm -hmm. um, very intense. Um, a typical vata would be somebody who, you know, think about your typical yoga, um, tall, willowy gymnast or yoga teacher would be a right. typical vata. So are kaffirs wonderfully able to create space for people? They tend to be non-judgmental, which is their gift. Um, they tend to very methodically see things through. Um, and basically, this is the kind that puts one foot in front of the other and just keeps on plodding through life. When they go out of balance, though, they get stuck. Um, they put on weight. They can have water retention. Um, they become our quintessential couch potatoes. You know, a body in motion stays in, men in motion with a kaffir. Once they're at rest, they stay at rest. It's difficult to get them to move. So what we have to do with kaffirs when they go out of balance is implement more of a like a spicy diet. We have to get them moving so that we can clear any sort of brain fog that happens with them. So those are the three major doshas, but you can be a combination. Of I was going to ask you that. Can you? And most people are. In fact, I'm a vata pitta, which means in the fall, when, that, when we tend to go into drier and colder weather, the vata in me is going to increase which means I want to add the opposite. So think warming soups and stews, all those root vegetables, grounding practices, a lot of routine so that I can remain anchored no matter what's swirling around me. Right. But in the summertime, when my pitta can go out of balance and that's that drive where I can get sharp and critical and frustrated and tell everybody how they should run the world, um, having cooling foods and cooling routine so that I can chill out, it's actually going to be the best thing for me. Right. So once you know your dosha, Stacey, it, it's much like having a roadmap. So you can follow that roadmap that tells you, okay, this is the right foods for me in the seasons. This is the right exercise for me. This is the right lifestyle for me. And then you get to have that sort of health and vitality, which so many people don't have. And then you're not suffering from symptoms which, you know, a lot of 80% of Americans now suffer from digestive disorders. Yes. So symptoms that sort of tell us that we're out of balance. Right. And, you know, I, I could completely relate because even I think I'm Doshin, I think I'm the first one because when you were describing it, I'm like, that's me for sure. <laughs> you know, and, I, you know, like, so when, when people go through this, like you talk about in your book, you go over the 25 day cleanse. No, it, now is it when a person comes to you and you see these symptoms, what are the first things you do to help them when you see, you know, you just, you, you diagnose them, you see what dosha they are, a combination of doshas, you see what their needs are. Like, how do you, what are the, what is the first step of healing them? So the first step of healing is to listen because sometimes um, people have been suffering with these things from for years and we tend to normalize it, you know, maybe it's the odd gas and bloating, maybe we're not sleeping as well as we used to, maybe we're just more irritable and we just put it down to getting older, maybe there's some joint pain, you know, and, and we sort of say, okay, we'll try a new diet or maybe we'll take some supplements and, and then we'll feel better. And then before we know it, the years have gone by and those symptoms are now becoming more chronic. It is not normal to have constant gas and bloating. It is not normal to be constipated. Yet you can go to any pharmacy and there's, there's aisles upon aisles of stuff to reduce acid, stuff to get you going. I mean, so what's going on here? Exactly. So I listen first and it's very important that I know who that person is. And then there's no one size fits all. So I can't say I start off with this one protocol for all people. Right. What's right for you isn't right for somebody else. But we do cleanse if there's evidence of digestive toxins. And one of the things I am looking for when I first meet somebody is, Stacey, I want you to imagine that in your belly is a fire and this is your digestive fire. Right. Want that digestive fire to be good and strong for your meals and mm -hmm. then come back down again and be good and strong for the next meal. And you get the picture. Yes. 
But in our current world, where we have all these crazy foods, crazy diets, fad diets, and all kinds of stuff that doesn't necessarily agree with us, and a lot of medication. Yes. What happens, so I'm going to walk you through a scenario. So let's assume that your digestive fire is not very strong, because maybe you've been on a course of antibiotics, or maybe you've just been eating the wrong foods for you, or maybe you've got gas and bloating or acidity or heartburn or burping, and these are all signs of poor digestion or IBS. So you have breakfast and that's like putting a log on the fire, or maybe you don't have breakfast because many people don't, but that, that flame is trying to burn through that log. And then maybe you're doing this crazy diet where you're told every two hours you should eat because that keeps your blood sugar levels up, which is true if you're a diabetic only. Mm -hmm. So then you add a load of branches or twigs onto that fire and then comes lunch and then comes another twig and then comes mid afternoon and that's a load more twigs and then comes your evening meal and that's another great big log. Well, what happens to that fire, that flame at the end of the day when you've added all those logs and twigs? Oh, it's starting to die out. It's, it's, you know, it's starting to work so hard that, you know, eventually that fire is just going to disintegrate and it's, you're not going to have the ability to actually have a warm room anymore because the fire is going to be gone or it's going to be there, there, but it's going to be very low and and it's not going to be working at full capacity. You got it. And you're a smart person. So you know that. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is your digestive fire. This is your metabolism in Western terms. So now you are no longer an efficient fat burner. Now your body says, okay, so you've got this puny little fire going along. You can't digest your food. I mean, it's like putting a flame underneath the food you want to cook for lunch. If it's not hot enough, you're not going to cook your food. Right. What happens to undigested food? It's you're still eating. You're still hungry. Right. That undigested food becomes toxic. And then in, in um, Ayurveda, we call it armor. It just means digestive toxins. These digestive toxins create inflammation and inflammation creates disease. Right. So we traditionally cleanse twice a year, once in spring and once in fall. Right. Uh, in spring to lighten and brighten up after the heaviness of winter in the fall to build our immunity for the upcoming winter and get rid of the heat of the summer. The only other time we'll cleanse is if there's evidence of digestive toxins. And in my consultations, I do a tongue analysis to see if there is armor or digestive toxins. If there is, that is the place we have to start because I could give my client the best diet in the world that's correct for their dosha, correct for the season, it's green, it's organic, it's politically correct. It checks all the boxes we want food to check. Yes. But if they can't access the nutrition from it, then, then we're not doing any good. So sometimes we do have to reset the digestion and that's called an Ayurveda cleanse or an Ayurveda detox. And I almost hate to use that word cleanse because it is such a buzzword and doesn't yeah. conjure up anything good for most people. Um, But an Ayurveda digestive reset or cleanse is is a very gentle way of resetting the digestion so that you become a more efficient fat burner. Often when people come to me with weight issues, not that I offer weight loss programs, but weight is a sign of imbalance, then we can see, yeah, the body's holding on to weight because that undigested food has to go somewhere. It becomes toxic. The body said, all right, we don't want these toxins hanging around the body. Let's do something with them. The body turns around and says, I know, we'll encapsulate these in, in fat cells because they're safer there. Yeah. On weight. And you're like, oh my God, why am I putting on weight? I know I'll eat less. I, I'll exercise more because that's what we're told to do. Right. The body says, you can starve as much as you like. You can fast as much as you like, but we are not getting rid of these toxins. So you can't get rid of that weight. So if that's going on with a client, that is where I'll, I'll start, if, if that sort of answers your question a little bit. So when you talk about um, ARMA and toxins and you go over that, you know, because I know so many people that, you know, they complain all the time. They're either in, um, they're kind of, their weight has plateaued or they have, you know, like you said, they have excess weight. They're doing everything they think they're supposed to be doing and the weight's not going anywhere and it's just staying there. Um, how, you know, how does that individual actually, um, you know, start to um, cleanse those toxins? What's the proper procedure and the proper pot- protocol that you tr- you put them on? 
So it depends again, and, and I'm going to frustrate on the individual. It always does depend. Yes. Um, a, not everybody should plan. So I just want to make that that clear straight off. If you're pregnant, nursing, coming off an illness, have a, a disease like um, cancer where you're getting chemotherapy, you're not going to cleanse. All cleanses are depleting to some extent. All right. So we don't want to do anything with somebody who's already trying to rejuvenate, who already is in depletion. So right. there's not cleanse. But um, what we would do is first off, what is it that you're eating? What is your lifestyle like? Are you eating out of seasons? And a lot of people are just because we can get certain foods 365 days in a year at the grocery yes. store doesn't mean it's right. And a good example, Stacey, is strawberries. Strawberries come out in what, around about June, July? Yeah, about that. They're a cooling food, which is great to combat the heat of the summer. So great, we eat strawberries in June and July, it cools us down. But if you were to put those same strawberries on your cereal or oatmeal in the middle of winter, just because you can still get strawberries, right? you're going to feel sluggish. Who on earth would think the strawberries would ever make you feel sluggish? So just an example of right food, healthy food, just wrong season. Right. So, so I, I have to know what's going on with the individual. And then what we would do is come off the more difficult inflammatory foods because they're not good for anybody. Yeah. So we're going to come off processed foods and all diets have that in, in, in common to come yes. off processed foods. And then um, we're going to, um, and then we'll add some foods that will um, take the toxins from the tissues to the digestive system. Things like some beets, which are a natural um, liver flush, Yes. Apples, which are really good for decreasing heat or inflammation in the body. Um, I also um, give a recipe for a tonic that's really good, a detox tonic that you can have as a soup, and that adds nutri nutrients to the system as well. So we want to bring those toxins out, and then we're going to use the natural systems of the body to remove those toxins. And then sweating is one. Um, we will take a purgative like castor oil to remove those toxins once they're in the digestive system, clean everything out in a right. very simple way, a plant-based way. And then we add a mono diet um, of kitri, which is one of our Ayurveda superfoods, which is just rice and beans and lots of vegetables and digestive spices that are right for who you are, your dosha. Do that for a week and then you start feeling phenomenal. Yeah. So thing, skin starts getting clearer. Focus gets a lot better. Sleep gets better. If weight is an issue, often at this point, there's weight loss. Yes. And just generally starting to feel better. And it's wonderful to see clients who have been so ill and, and didn't think they would necessarily feel that much better to suddenly start coming alive again and thinking, oh my God, I've got energy. I wake up in the morning raring to go. I can get through the day with sustained energy. I'm not yelling at the kids all the time or at my husband. So it's really nice to see that. And then after that, we'll start introducing the foods back in that are right for who you are. That's the nutrition part of a cleanse, but a cleanse is an emotional cleanse as well. So we take into account lifestyle, we'll get you moving, we'll add some oils to the body that if you're a vata and nourishing and grounding for that central nervous system, if you're a pitta, they're gonna be cooling. If you're a kapha, they're gonna be more, um, accelerating so they're going to sort of spice things up a little bit for you to to get through that sluggishness yeah so it, it's a really sort of wraparound approach a really sort of comprehensive approach it's not just nutrition yeah often people come to ayurveda think oh there's such a thing as an ayurveda diet or it's all about the food it is an important part but ayurveda takes a sort of um kitchen pharmacy approach to food where we mm -hmm. can food as medicine but also herbs are important and lifestyle is really important yeah you know if you're running yourself ragged or the best food in the world is not going to do you any good unless we can change that lifestyle a bit oh 100 percent, yes and i find many people stacy by the time they come to see me especially women have put everybody else first and there has been no self-care at all i and see that all the time also yes it builds up over the years and you know and then they the body at one point turns around and says, I can't do this anymore. And then you get a diagnosis and it's so much easier to prevent the diagnosis than 
may see somebody with a diagnosis and try and reverse the process. Yes. And you know, it's sad, but like they say 70% of illnesses are caused by stress and we are the, our worst enemies. We cause the stress by the lifestyle we le live and people don't realize that. And then we get these illnesses and they're wondering why this is going wrong and this is going wrong. And how did this happen to me? Why, why, why? Well, look at yourself and look at the life you're leading. Look at the food you're putting in your mouth. And it's terrible also because did you see it? When you go into the food stores, our media has so many processed foods. A lot of those foods when I went to Europe were banned. You could not get those foods. Only in America you were able to get those foods. They got great marketing, you know, lose weight with this brand and this brand and this brand. A quick, you know, quick fix. Everybody's on the go. Like you said, they're not taking care of themselves. They're thinking about everything everybody else. And all these processed foods, they don't realize all these ingredients are getting stored in their body and they're going into their organs and all these things are going to happen. You know, either it's going to happen quickly or slowly depend on your body, but eventually it will catch up with you. Don't you think? Oh, I do. I have my own health story and it did. It caught up with me. I mean, I got here for a reason, you know, and, and it took me five years to get well again. So when I talk to clients, I know where they're from. Somebody comes with fibromyalgia and it's like, yeah, I was diagnosed with that. I was diagnosed with depression. I was on drugs for those things. I had chemical sensitivities. I know all those things. And um, you take a drug for this and then you get, a, you know, and then something else. And then you take a drug to handle that side effect. And then, you know, it, it, it's crazy. Um, and it's not just, I mean, we all have our own health stories, many of us, and certainly the clients come to see me, they do. But looking at our life overall, I mean, one in four children are medicated. I mean, yes. that's crazy. That's that quarter of our population of children. We just dope up. Why is that? Yes. Don't tell me there's something wrong with, you know, 25% of our kids. Um we have 48% of Americans can't sleep, which means they either can't get to sleep or they can't stay asleep. So what's going on with the world that this is happening? 80% of Americans have digestive problems and this is diagnosed digestive problems. Yes. So 50% of Americans have gone to a physician and been diagnosed with something. So, and, and we can see anxiety and depression and how that's increased, especially since COVID. And then we've got younger and younger kids coming to me on major medications, major, yes. psychiatric, you know, psychiatric medications. And you've got to wonder what is going on in the world? What are, what's happening? But we're doing this. And even the very physicians that we go to for help sometimes don't get it. I mean, that they give you the best job they can with all the tools that they have in their toolbox. Yes. I mean, I was at a conference talking to um, physicians and we were talking about insomnia. And I said, well, how many people in this room have insomnia? Hmm. And this guy said, well, I don't because I take medication. And I said, okay, but you do have insomnia. You just take medication. Right. No, I don't have it because I take medication. And I said, okay, but if you took the medication away, you would have insomnia, wouldn't you? He goes, but I don't have it because I take medication. And I couldn't get it, get it through. Get it through his head. <laughs> he didn't. And this was a physician who just didn't understand. You do still have that issue. Right taking medication for high blood pressure but you take that medication away and you've got high blood pressure again it hasn't got rid of the, the problem the problem you haven't <laughs> gotten to the root cause of it yet you haven't no. fixed the problem no. it's just temporarily fixed with medication but some of that is ourselves too stacy i mean i've yes. had people that come to me and they want a quick fix you know give me a herb and whether i give them a herb a natural or a supplement i mean the supplement business is a multi-billion dollar business yes it is but Somehow that's hoodwinked us into thinking that we can't we can't live properly without supplements. Of course we can. But we're so looking for, for something to do it, you know, a quick fix. Yes. We end up doing crazy things at times. We do. You know, everybody in this society, you know, wants a quick fix. They get angry when, you know, you know how many patients would come and, and they would be, you know, they would get angry because they they wanted the quick fix and they didn't want to wait. And they're, you know, and when they didn't see the results right at that moment, they got upset because they just, you know, they don't realize, but the, the best things come slowly. 
when you, you, there is no such thing as a quick fix. That's just a marketing terminology that was created to sell products. And, you know, it's not, it's not an actual realistic term. There is no quick fix, you know, in anything, you know, and people have to realize you go to the doctor, you're, you're like you said, insomnia. Well, he gave you a pill. Now I don't have insomnia, but you do. You know, without that pill, as soon as that pill is taken away, your insomnia is there. You're just masking it temporarily with a medication. A pill for every ill. Yeah. And and that's where we are. I mean, it it it's it it's difficult, you know, especially when people work with me, for example, because I only work in year-long programs. Um, and not that's not right for everybody. That there are some people that will turn around to me and say, No, I I I can't commit to my health for a year. And I'm thinking, gosh, that's sad that you're yeah. not going to put on the right path for the rest of your life right. by working on your health for a year. It's not something you hop in and out of. I'll work on it and never think about it again. You know, this is the best gift that you can give yourself, your health. And we don't realize until we start losing it. Yes. And it, we, you know, it's hard when somebody is in their 50s or 60s and comes to see me and says, well, I can't do these things anymore. Or they cry and say, I just want to be able to hike with my grandkids, or I want to be able to get on the floor with my grandkids. Right. And we we shouldn't allow that to happen. Um, and it's not always somebody's fault. They do what they think's right. You know? Yeah. And nutrition changes. The rules of nutrition seem to change. I remember being told that eggs weren't good for you, and margarine was, and now eggs are good for you, and butter's better. And I mean, what I like about Ayurveda is the rules don't change. The yes. seasons change. We should change according to the seasons, but the rules still stay the same. Yes, they do. They, they, they don't change. And that's the one good thing about Ayurveda is, is that the rules don't change. And again, you know, because people, they do, they do research and, you know, in nutrition and, you know, to this day, are eggs good for you? This has been a, this has been a debate that goes on for like, I can't even remember, you know, it's, it's, you know, are they good for you? Are they not good for you? You know, are they going to give you high cholesterol, the yolk, you know, can you, are egg whites good for you and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you hear, you hear, you know, that, and that's the problem. They, people hear so many conflicting um ideas from so many different people that they don't know what's good and what's not good you know yeah you're absolutely right Stacey I think in the age of information you can go online and Dr Google will tell you all kinds of things you know I have people come to me and they're so confused about what you can eat I mean we have more theories and and, and yes. diets and there are days in a month I mean it's crazy um, and people are doing all kinds. I remember I used to have a weight problem myself and I, I did the cabbage soup diet. How many of, the, of us remember that? Eating nothing but cabbage soup. Wondered why I've got gas and bloating. <laughs> I wanted to lose weight. <laughs> Who cared if I had gas and bloating? Um, and for a short period of time, it did work. You know, we all lost weight on it. But uh, yeah, the diet industry... Um, you got to wonder about an industry that wants you to stay confused because, and wants you not to succeed because if you succeeded, you wouldn't need them anymore. So that's a lot of money to be made in diet products. Yes. And that's sad, you know, because the first priority of, of the, um, you know, should be to, to help the individual. And it's not, it's to, you know, a lot of times you see that they just want to make money and they're not looking out for the individual. They're looking out for their bank accounts, you know, and, and the profitability that they're going to bring in, you know, and that's the wrong mentality, to, you know, to, to establish. But in this world, you know, greed has seemed to, you know, in, in America, we tend to, you know, value the dollar bill more than we value people's lives. And it's sad, you know, but people have that's to. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I, said, I just said. <laughs> You go. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that I, people have to really put their priorities in line. You know, that's what I was going to say. And do their research. So buyer beware. You know, yes. If, if you're choosing to do something, then do the research behind it. Why are you taking it? I mean, I'll have people come to me with a laundry list of supplements they're taking. And I'll be like, so why are you taking this? And, and then normally I get a blank look back. Oh, well, I thought it might do me good. And it's like, okay, is it? Oh, I don't know. 
Um, or somebody will say, well, my chiropractor told me to take it, or my sister's brother's aunt's fiance told me to take it, or my dog took it and it worked for him. Right. So, I mean, it's crazy reasons that we take all these supplements and it gets expensive. It's expensive. Um, what was it? One of my European friends said to me, um, Americans have the most expensive urine in the world. <laughs> So most of those supplements were just going to pee out anyway. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of times, like you look in the back of the ingredients and it's it's mostly fillers and some of the stuff, you know, it, it, it costs pennies and they're selling it for $30, $40, you know, $50 a bottle. And you, if you actually look at, at what it's made of, it's, it's made of a few things that are so inexpensive, you know, to put together. And, you know, they're, you're paying for the packaging and the label and, and, you know, and I say to people, if you can't pronounce the word, then obviously it's not good for you, you know, and uh, you look into, you know, the industry and, you know, people are making supplements all over the place. But, you know, I said, where, you know, I hear people say, well, I, like you said, you gave a list long of, of things that people say, well, I got it. I heard from this person and that person. But, you know, where did, where are they getting their information from? You know, I had a, a friend, you know, that, that was you know, making a choice and an important choice because she heard, you know, I said, why, why are you doing that? You know, well, I heard it on the radio. I said, well, who, who was speaking? You know, it was the radio broadcaster, the person that was in charge of the radio show. Okay, how much knowledge do they have in that field, you know, and people don't realize you have to look at the source where this information is coming from. I never, you know, take value, you know, I, I read things and I learn, but then I look at the resources, where is this information actually coming from? Is there value to it? You know, is there any science back to it? Is who's the professional that 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 is stating or making these quotes? Anyone could write an article, anyone could say That's anything. Fine. But yeah. you have to really think about where it's coming from and how knowledgeable the individual is in that, in, you know, certain, you know, um, area. Yeah. And what is the background of that person? Yeah. Credibility is really important as well. Yes, it, ver it is very much so. Now, tell me about your website. I want to hear, you know, I've been on your website. I love your website, but our audience, you know, a lot of the, our, our listeners may not have visited your website. Let them know what your website is and tell everybody about all the different things that you have available on your website. So the website is sort of um, a, por a portal, if you like, into what I do. Um, it's theholistichighway.com. Don't forget the theholistichighway.com. Otherwise, you'll end up with some psychologist who's also a holistic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's theholistichighway.com. And when you get there, um, you'll have the option to take a dosha quiz. Um, remember, we talked about those sort of metabolic types so that you can find out what is your metabolic type. And then that's going to spit out a report for you. That will give you some um, some food choices that are right for you, some routine choices. So that's a great thing to do. Um, I also have um, a skin care assessment um, questionnaire that's up there as well when you get to the homepage. And that's because I have my own skincare line. Um, just as you were talking about, Stacy, you want to be able to pronounce what we take and what you put on your skin ends up in our bodies too. Yes. So um, I have a skincare line that's right for your dosha, that's personalized for you and right for the season. Which, and it kind of makes sense that what we do in winter is not going to be the same as what we do in summer for our yes. skin and that we need different things. So, but you still have to know who you are. So what is the right type of skincare for you? Um, so I have that. And then, you know, there's my blog. Um, it's called A Cup of Tea because I'm <laughs> English. So uh, have a cup of tea with me and all kinds of sort of, information from why do we cleanse in the fall um that's the current blog to um different food choices meals that heal herbs that heal um to try and give as much information um to you as possible and so you know what what I love is that one important factor that you you made in this conversation is that you know what's good in the fall may not be good in the um in the winter or spring or the summer it you know the seasons change and so your diet and the way of living has to you know alter as well you know i don't think many people realize that i don't think many people understand that you know a lot of people do the same thing it works now so they continue yeah. to do it consistently 
but then they wonder why it's not working. And that was a very good point. That's that's very interesting. So eating seasonally. And I think what what's a shame is sometimes we don't know what that means anymore because we can get the same things 300 in, in the store all year round. I've had clients say to me, but I don't know what's in season. And, and that always surprises me. So those people who have gardens, those people who get CSAs, yeah, they're, they're pretty um, knowledgeable of what's in season. But if you're not, then, then sort of just go to your local farmer's market. But in, in the fall, for example, we're just coming into fall right now. And what's in season? Apples. Apples actually are a natural diuretic. And they also get rid of the heat of the summer. So if you don't get rid of the heat of the summer that's still in your body, you're going to dry out in the fall, which means you're not going to feel very good in the winter. And come spring, you're probably going to get congested. And that's when we get those spring allergies and spring coughs and colds from. So we don't normally think that what we do in one season plays out for the next season and the one after that. So apples are in season. All those root vegetables are in season. They're sweet in nature, which grounds the central nervous system. Think about fall. We can feel a little spacey, a little scattered. The wind's blowing. Things are moving around us. Um, and that can have us feeling that way too. Our digestion can go a little out. Of, out um, we may be not sleeping quite as well. Um, even though it's got cooler. And for those that are pitch, I love the fact that it's got cooler now. <laughs> so those warming root vegetables, think warm soups and stews, a woolly scarf around your neck when it gets cold, all designed to combat the coldness and the dryness of this season. Um, and then when we get into winter, we need those nuts and greens. We actually need a higher protein diet to combat um the, the coldness of the winter and the depression that we can sometimes feel in the winter. Right. So we need that. But then comes spring, as it starts getting, um, the days get warmer and it starts getting lighter, we want to come out of the heaviness of those winter grains and nuts. So think about what's naturally in season, all those, those um, fresh greens that are coming in, asparagus, dandelion leaves, chicory, these spring greens are all bitter in nature that are naturally detoxifying. So they're going to detoxify the heaviness or any weight that we've put on in the winter. I put on weight in the winter, much like your average bear that hibernates. I do right. on 10 pounds, but I know come spring, it's all going to go again because I'm going to eat the right foods. I want that weight in winter time. Otherwise I'm going to freeze. I live in New England. You know, <laughs> I either go to Florida or I put weight on one or the other. Florida today. <laughs> Um, so it comes those detoxifying foods, which are a natural antidote to the allergy season. But then come summer, we find all those cooling fruits and vegetables. And we actually want more in the summertime, um, higher carbs, because we actually have more energy in the summertime. We have yes. more days. So we actually need more carbs. So when we go on this low carb diet or high protein diet or this diet or that diet, it may be a right diet for one of those seasons, but it is not right all year round. Right. So even diets, yes, it may be right for a certain period of time for you, but you can't stay on it because it's not going to be right for every season because it exactly. makes sense. You want low fat, low calorie in the spring. You want high carb um, when the days are longer in the summer. And then in the fall, you want a higher protein diet to combat the cold in the fall and winter. So uh, yeah, eating seasonally is so important. And then when we don't eat seasonally, we get imbalanced. That stresses the body. Yes. Stress is going to affect you individually, depending upon your dosha. How your body breaks down under stress is individual to you. My job is getting to the root cause of that and getting you back into balance again. Excellent. I, you know, and also you have a book, the 25 uh, day uh, Ayurveda cleanse. And I want you to tell people a little about the book. And because I think that would be a great resource for people. So, you know, and not just to go to your website and to use all your services, but also to read that book, because it was very thorough. It explained everything very well. And it gave a lot of great tips in that book. So can you tell people a little about the book and where they can find it? Yeah, so you can find it on all the places you can find books. So Books A Million, Amazon, um, Barnes & Nobles, all those places you can get it. 
Um, and I wrote this book because so many people I couldn't reach had had all these symptoms, you know, and then when we boiled those symptoms down, it seemed to be evidence of these digestive toxins. They were eating incorrectly it, um, and it was affecting their digestive system. So this digestive reset to remove those toxins. So I wrote this book um, to help all those people that I couldn't reach one on one. And um, it got published a couple of years ago. Um, and, and thank you for also reviewing that book for me. Stacy, and then it got published in Spanish too. And I, I didn't realize until I got a Spanish copy through my mailbox and, mailbox, and it's like, oh, I wish I could read it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it, it is a fully comprehensive, it will take you through the cleanse. It'll take you into my story, why I do it, do what I do, um, and then why I created this cleanse. It's a very gentle cleanse, anybody can do it. I also go into um, those that shouldn't, you know, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, for example, or coming off an illness. Right. Um, it has a dosha quiz in it. It has all the recipes and each one of the recipes for the cleanse is adapted for anybody else who might be doing the cleanse with you for all the different doshas. Um, so just know that by going through this, this is going to reset your digestion and you're going to feel so much better afterwards. Um, it also links to different videos that I have on my website. Um, you'll get into a membership site where there's a yoga sequence or some movement sequences. So um, in every way I can help you with this to get through it. I've done that in the book as a way to try and reach more people. Excellent. And so one more time, so people don't forget, tell everybody your website one more time so they know where to go. So it's the... T H E the holistic highway that's H O L I S T I C highway as in the road highway. So it's a one word dot com. So it's the holistic highway. Or if somebody just wants to reach out to me personally, it's Kerry K E R R Y Kerry at the holistic highway.com. And you'll find me there as well. Yeah, and I'm Carrie. always able to answer any questions that you might have, or just chat anybody who's interested in what I do or I evade or just feeling better then let's have a chat because if I can help you, that's great. But if not, I have a lot of resources so I can at least point somebody in the direction of, of, of what can help them. And that's what I would want. Thank you so much, Carrie. You know, I, I appreciate your time and I appreciate all this great knowledge that you provided to people because a lot of people don't know about this form of um, alternative uh, way of living in integrative medicine. You know, they, they've heard of it, but they might not know a lot about it. So you've really given a descriptive, um, a lot of great pointers, a lot of descriptive uh, details about, you know, Ayurveda and, and what it can do for your body. And I appreciate that. Now, if you can give before we go, people three tips on, you know, staying healthy. And if they don't, they see themselves kind of swaying away from good health. Is there, is there anything that you'd like to tell them, you know, um, if they start to see their health declining, you know, so they can actually stop it before it gets chronic? Yeah, I often get asked that. So I would say probably the, the things that you can do to get the most man for your buck, so to speak, is one, eat seasonally. All right. Find out what's in season. If you eat a seasonal diet, that means your body's so going to love you. You're going to do so much better. So eat seasonally. Two, have your biggest meal of the day at lunchtime. And that's so against our culture and that's so difficult to do. But our digestive fire, that metabolism is strongest at lunchtime. If you have your biggest meal of the day in the evening, when your digestive fire is actually at its lowest, then you're trying to get your digestive system to do something it just doesn't really have the strength to do. You're putting so much stress and we wonder why we put on weight. So if, especially for good weight, for good health, for good digestion, you wanna have your biggest meal of the day at lunch. Doesn't mean you can't have your meal with the family at nighttime, but the, just more, the most robust meal should be at lunchtime. Um, and one other thing, because we haven't talked so much about lifestyle, get out in nature. We, we forget that we, we're part of nature um, and there's something very grounding about getting out for a walk in the woods or going for a walk. If you're by water, especially if you're a pitta because water is cooling, that does do really well with walking through the woods because it calms and grounds their central nervous system. 
heifers need to walk because they need to move. <laughs> um, so getting out in nature does so much um, for rejuvenation and restoring. So no matter how busy we get, take that half hour and say, all right, I've had my lunch. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to smell the flowers. I'm going to watch the birds sing. I'm going to watch the squirrels, Wh whatever it is you need to do, but try and get out in, in nature. That's going to be far better than a nap or candy or that second cup of coffee or third cup of coffee in restoring who you are and making you feel more energized. So those three things. So Excellent. Seasonally, lunch, biggest meal of the day and get out in nature daily. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. This was Carl. This was Carrie Harlan from the holistichighway.com. And you could reach her there at Carrie at the holistichighway.com. And thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, be with us and explain all this stuff. And we'd love to have you back one day and we could talk some more about this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stacey. It was absolutely my pleasure. It was lovely to be here with you. Same here. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye for now. So once you know...